Welcome to the next lesson of coordinate geometry. Now, we're nearing the end of this topic, so we're going to be leaving linear equations behind and starting to have a look at some other kinds of graphs, what they're called, what they're going to look like, and what the numbers do in the equation and how that affects the graph. To do that, we should probably start by just having a little bit of a revision about our linear equations. So remember, this one is our linear equation. f of x for us is a y, so y equals x. Your gradient is the number in front of x. At the moment, there's no number there, so we know that it's a 1. So we go up 1 across 1, up 1 across 1. That gets us to our next point on our line. We can have a look at and know that the number on its own is the y-intercept. Because we have no constant, no number on its own, our y-intercept is 0. That's why our graph is cutting the line at the origin at 0, 0. If we start adding numbers, we can see that the intercept starts changing to match the constant in the equation. We've got plus 4, so our y-intercept is 4. We have minus 2, so our y-intercept is negative 2. When we start to change the gradient, we increase the slope, so our line rises much more quickly. When we start to make a negative gradient, you can see that it just increases in how fast it falls rather than how fast it rises. So that's just a quick overview of our linear equations. Things we need to be more familiar with are the following graphs. Here, as you can see, we don't have an f of x, we have a y, and our y equals x squared. When we have y equals x squared, we call it a parabola. As you can see, the parabola is a bowl, or a smiley face. Your graph drops down, turns around at a certain point, and picks its way up again. Now, it's looking okay at the moment. Our line is rather symmetrical. It's kind of evenly spaced out in its whole U-shape and the point that it crosses the y-axis is at 0, 0. And you'll notice that over here in the equation there is no plus or minus any kind of constant number. If we start to change that and add on a constant, we start to see the graph moving up to equal the value of our constant. And likewise, if we make it a negative number, you can see the y-intercept, where our graph turns around, matches the constant in our equation. We can also start to increase the value out the front of our x-squared term, and that makes our graph more narrow. If we start dropping this down to be negative, you can start to see that the graph has flipped around, and a number of negative 4 out the front of our x-squared makes our graph quite steep. It is now a sad face, or an N rather than a U or a smiley face. That is the effect the X squared term has on our graph. Uh, we can start to add just an ordinary X term in the middle and that starts to move our graph around in many different ways. As you can see, by making a negative X term you're moving the graph to the right and down. With a positive X term out the front you're moving the graph to the left and down. And finally, what else we can do with our x's is if you have a y equals x cubed graph, you have what you call a cubic graph. And here, if we do that on ours, and we will minimize some of these numbers here, start to see the shape of what a cubic looks like. So just a y equals x cubed graph, you can see that it starts to come up. It flattens out. It flattens out to a straight line, even if just momentarily then it starts to pick up speed and shoot off in a positive direction again. When you increase the value out the front of your x cubed, you just make that steepness more and more. Taking it down to a negative value, you have the same kind of graph, but you're going down instead. When you start to add a constant out the end, once again, the constant directly translates into the y-intercept. So plus 4 means you're crossing the y-axis at 4. Minus 2 means you're crossing the y-axis at negative 2. Then we can start to add in our x-squared terms. And notice that actually makes our graph turn around and then go back in the direction it was heading after a certain while. Uh, and you can add in x terms, which decrease that at the same time. So this gets a little difficult to understand at times. But what hopefully what this allows you to do is just to have a rough idea of what your graph should look like given the equation that you're given in the question. One more to learn is what we call a hyperbola. Now it's when your x and y's are together, they're on the same side of the equal sign, and it equals a constant number. 
your x and y terms are squared, they've been taken away from each other. So this feature here of being squared, this feature here of being taken away are all the features needed to make a hyperbola and they need to equal an actual number and not zero. Uh, as you can see, there's actually two graphs on this equation. You've got two lines that don't connect anywhere. It's not, I've zoomed in too much and you can't see where they overlap each other. These two lines literally don't connect with each other. When we start to change some of these values, so when we increase the number that x is divided by, you start to move your graph, you start to move your two graphs further apart. So here, you can see that they dropped. They're increasing in their shallowness, and they're also moving further and further away from each other. Doing the same to the y's, they start to become more and more shallow. So the bigger the number the y squared is being divided by, the more shallow your graph should be. If you start to increase or decrease the number that is being taken away from x, you start to move the graph left or right. And likewise, if you start to increase or decrease a number that has been added or taken away from the y inside the squared term, you start to move your graph up or down. So these are just things to be aware of as well. I'm not expecting you them to remember them all at the moment. What I need you to do is just to be aware that there are many different kinds of graphs out there, many different kinds of functions, and what numbers and where those numbers appear in those equations greatly affect the graph and how it should turn out. What you guys need to do, just to be able to deal with these, is here's a couple of examples. All you need to be able to do is recognize the graph that you're expected to create based on the features of the equation you're trying to graph. So here, because we've got an x squared term, we're going to be graphing a parabola. Here, because we've got a couple of squared terms surrounding an x and a y, uh, and it all equals just a number, this one was our hyperbola. So when it comes time to graphing these, you need to recognize the fact that in the negative and positive x regions of your graph, you're going to come out with some very different pictures. So the most basic way of drawing two graphs is to set up your little table, sub in a few values, and plot those points. What you need to recognize is because we're not dealing with linear equations anymore, the patterns change when you cross the y-axis so you need to have values of x that take into account positive and negative regions. So here with a negative 2, you end up with negative 2 squared minus 3 times a negative 2 plus a 4. Because the negative 2 is in brackets, the negative is squared as well, so it ends up being 4 plus 6 plus 4 to give you... 14. When you sub in negative 1, you're going to get negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 4. So you're going to have 1 plus 3 plus 4 to give you 8. When you sub in 0, all those x terms will disappear and you'll be left with a 4. When you sub in 1, it's going to be 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 4. So you're going to end up with 1 minus 3 is 2 plus 4 is 2. Then when you sub 2 in, you're going to end up with 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 4. So 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Uh, then you take away the 6 in the middle, so you get 2. And if we extend this out, you might start to see a pattern. If we put 3 in there, you'll end up with y equals 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 4. Now, 3 squared is 9, plus 4 is 13, minus 9 is 4. So sub that value in. You can start to see that in here somewhere is the turning point of our parabola. So our parabola should look like a U. It's going to turn around somewhere. Our parabolas are always symmetrical, so your values will start to drop, they'll hit a certain point, come back up with the very same values that they dropped by. So when it comes time to graphing these, you simply draw up your axes, label appropriately, x and y, 
plot these points when x equals negative 2, y equals 14, so that's going to be up here somewhere. When x equals negative 1, it's going to be 8, so that'll be around here somewhere. When x is 0, y is equal to 4, so that'll be around there. When x is 1, it'll be equal to 2. When x is 2, it's also equal to 2. When x is 3, it's equal to 4, so that's at the same height. Then draw your line in making it look nice and symmetrical, turning in between where it should turn, and that's it. What you would do for the hyperbola is very much the exact same thing. You would draw up your table of x and y values, you would sub you would sub in a range of negative and positive values, you'd find the answer for each of those and then you would graph your resulting equation accordingly using all the points you've just found. Now I'm not going to go into that. Basically everything remains the same. This is a skill that you have been practicing for quite some time by plotting points and drawing the resulting equation. The only difference in today's lesson is that you will be given some curved lines to graph rather than just straight ones all the time. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson and good luck.